In this video, we'll take a look at the Haas Dual Spindle Lathe Post Processor provided by FastTech. We'll show you some of the functionality of the post processor. We'll review the code layout and some of the things to be aware of. We'll take a look at some of the planes and how to program certain features. And then we'll give you an overview of how the part transfer is handled at the end. Now this is going to be relevant to multiple machines. This would be the Haas DS series lays as well as the TL series, which also can include live tooling and dual spindles. And then finally, the new Haas ST models, which now offer a subspindle option. Haas uses a common code format for all of their lays, so we can use the same post processor for any of the dual spindle lays. Let's start off by taking this file and generating the code and take a look at a couple of the prompts that come up when we initially start. The first thing we'll be prompted is for the G50 max spindle speed. This is a final override for the entire program. As you may know, the G50 is set in each of your operations in Mastercam. This prompt is simply a final say in the process that will ensure that any operations that may have been improperly set won't exceed the value that we place in this box. Now this does not apply to any direct RPM operations. This simply is a final override for all G50 statements found in the G-code. So in this case, I'm going to set it to 3500 and hit enter. Next, we're going to be prompted for the G53 home positions for X and then Z. Now traditionally, most people are going to run X at zero so that it takes it all the way up. So I'll just hit enter. Now the Z position is there to move the turret to a, a position that's relatively in between both the main and the sub spindles. The negative six value is defaulted based on the common value for the Haas DS series, but this number may vary depending on the size of your machine. This value can be defaulted differently, but this also gives you a way to adjust it on the fly per program if you wish to move the turret closer or further from the main spindle during operation. I'll just hit enter in this case. Next, let's take a look at the general code format and see how things will be laid out. You can see at a tool change, we're going to always take each of the axes to its home position so that no matter where we start in the program, we can always have a safe startup routine. We'll always move Y, then X, and then Z. You can also see the same format at the end of each tool, moving Y, then X, then Z. We also see that at the beginning of a main spindle operation, we're always going to take the B axis all the way home. The B axis is the subspindle. This moves it all the way to its furthest extent in order to give the maximum amount of clearance when machining on the main spindle. If we take a look at a subspindle operation, we're going to start up with the same home positions, but instead for the B axis, we're going to call G55, which would be the work offset for the subspindle, and we're going to take it to B0. The intent here is that the G55 work offset contains the position for the subspindle where it will be machining. So when we call G55B0, this moves the subspindle from its home position into the position where we will be machining. Jumping back to the main spindle, we can see that directly after a tool change, we'll have a startup line. And this will always start with a G15 or a G14. These codes are for the mirror mode. G15 will cancel any mirror mode that's currently active when we're machining on the main spindle. When we're on the sub spindle, we can see that after the tool change, we'll call the G14. This enables the mirror mode option on the controller. What this does is it mirrors all the coordinates and it also allows us to utilize the same M codes from the main spindle. This method is recommended by Haas whenever programming on the sub spindle. Next, let's take a look at some milling operations on the face. In this case, we're going to utilize the C-axis to mill around this feature on the face. We'll use the C-axis because our Y and X-axis don't have enough travel to come all the way across to the other side of the part. So in our operation, we can see that we have the rotary type set to C-axis. 
Additionally, on the Miscellaneous Value tab, we've enabled the Face Interpolation option. This utilizes the G-code G112. Looking at the code, we can see that as soon as the G112 is called, all of the coordinates that follow are actually X, Y, and Z. What this does is it transforms the program into a milling coordinate system, and the controller translates that into X and C motion. This drastically reduces the size of the code and can often give a smoother surface finish on the outer profile of your cuts. The only time you may not wish to use this option is if you are roughing a part out and you're trying to achieve a higher feed rate. If we take a look at the next operation, this is also using the C-axis face, but in this case we have face interpolation turned off. So what we can see is that all of the output is X and C. In this case, you can also see that the feed rate is adjusting as it goes. The reason for this is that Haas uses a specific type of feed rate when milling outside of face interpolation. This takes into account the position of the x-axis relative to a specific parameter in the controller. In the Haas control, this is setting 102. This value is a diameter that specifies where the machining is being done. Because that value can only be set to one diameter at a time, we actually leave the setting in the controller at its default value, and instead in Mastercam we are calculating the feed rate based on the difference between the diameter in the controller and the diameter that we're actually machining on. So the feed rate is adjusted by a specific factor. This allows us to maintain the proper surface speed that we've programmed the operation at. Looking again at the face interpolation mode, we can see that our feed rate is actually just exactly what we programmed. During face interpolation, the adjusted feed rates are not necessary because the controller is already calculating that based on the programming. Next, let's take a look at another function of face milling. In this case, we're going to drill these two holes and we want to use the physical Y axis. Now the trouble here might be that in order to reach this hole on the other side, we need to travel in the negative x direction because our feature is aligned with the x-axis. So what we can do instead in order to utilize the y-axis travel is we can create what we call a twisted plane. You can see here that my tool plane is called Face C90. If we jump into our planes tab, Typically when I'm milling on the face of the main spindle, I would be utilizing the right side plane orientation. In this case, the X positive axis aligns with the X axis or where the tool is coming from. In order to create the twisted plane, I can simply duplicate the right side tool plane, rename it, and then I need to right click and rotate incremental around the Z axis. In this case, I've just indexed it 90 degrees so that the x-axis is now pointed to this side of the part. What will happen now is the operation will always start by indexing so that the x-axis of your tool plane aligns with the x-axis of the machine. So we'll get a C90 rotation and then we'll be able to utilize the y-axis. If we look at the code format, we see here that it goes C90 at the beginning and then as it moves between each of the drill points, it just moves the y-axis. Next, let's take a look at some of our plane orientations between the main spindle and the subspindle. When we're turning on the main spindle, the plane created for us is the lathe upper left. When we're on the right spindle, the plane created for us is the lathe upper right. In this case, it's lathe upper right dash one. Yours may be different. When we look at the planes and we select the lathe upper left, we can see that the X positive axis go, points towards the turret and the Z axis points away from the chuck. Because we're utilizing a mirror mode on the subspindle, we can see that when we select the lathe upper right dash one, that the Z direction is now flipped the opposite way, the X axis still pointing towards the turret. What this means is that in your subspindle operations when you're turning, specifically with drilling, the depths are still going to be negative. So 
a negative direction will be towards the truck and a positive direction will be away from the truck. So this will be identical when you're programming on the main spindle or the sub spindle. If you program for other dual spindle machines that don't utilize a mirror mode, then you're likely used to entering a positive depth value when you move to the sub spindle because the machine's coordinate system is not being flipped. Next, let's take a look at the orientation of the face milling plane on the sub spindle. We can see here it's called sub face plane. If we select that here from our list, we can see that the X positive axis still points towards the turret and the Z axis is now pointed away from the part or the chuck. This would be our C0 position when we wish to machine directly on the face. We can also utilize the same twist planes if we like by copying this plane and then rotating it around the Z axis. Next, we'll take a look at milling and drilling on the subspindle with live tools. Keep in mind that the Haas dual spindle lays do not have a physical C axis on the subspindle. For this reason, we must keep the machine in turning mode and we can utilize a G19 or a G119 code in order to orient the spindle to a specific angle and then we utilize the machine brake in order to lock the spindle at that orientation to keep things rigid. So there's only certain operation types that we cannot perform on the subspindle. We cannot do any continuous rotary motion on the subspindle. The only thing that can be accomplished is indexing and then cutting with X, Y, or Z. If we take a look at how this appears in the code, we can see here that for milling operations, we're actually not utilizing the mirror mode. So we just have a G15 code here to cancel it. In this case, we're utilizing the GNM codes that are specific for the subspindle. In this case, G119 tells it to index the spindle to a specific angle. The R value represents this angle. So we start off at zero, there's a recommended delay, and then the spindle break is applied. Next, we'll machine with X, Y, and Z. And once it's done, we actually need to turn off the brake, index to the next angle, apply the same amount of dwell, and then reapply the brake before we can run the next position. The same is true for cross drilling. It's going to index using the G119, dwell for a specific amount of time, and then apply the spindle brake. Anytime the C-axis or the spindle needs to reorient, we're always going to see an unbrake, an index, and then the brake turns back on. The last thing that we'll look at is the part transfer process. The post processor is set up to utilize Mastercam's POCO operation, or pick off, pull, cut off toolpath. This is found under the turning tab. Before we can start this operation, we just need to make sure a few things are set. And when we look in our stock setup, it requires that we have stock on the left spindle, no stock defined on the right, and then we also need to define chuck jaws on the left and the right spindle. Without chuck jaws defined for the right spindle, there's nothing to transfer to, so this is a requirement. Once those are set up, it's also a good idea to have your tooling set up ahead of time. So if we look in the lathe tool manager, I can see I have one operation here on the main with tool one, and I've also already defined a tool to use on the sub spindle. It's tool two, and I've designated it RS for right spindle. Additionally, I have my cutoff tool ready to go and designated to the proper tool number. Now I just go to the turning tab, and under the part handling section, I can select the pick off pull cutoff. Again, the post is set up to utilize pick off pull cutoff, pick off cutoff, and just a regular pick off. Each of these methods will work the same way. The only difference is obviously in this case, we're pulling it and we're using a cutoff tool. Here, we're just cutting it off. And then on the pick off, there's no cutoff involved at all. So we'll go ahead and do the more complex option. We'll select our geometry. At this point, I can select any geometry that I want to transfer over to the subspindle. So if any of those are turned off in my levels, I can go in and turn those on now to make sure they're all selected. Then I hit End Selection, and I'll tell it to translate the geometry. This allows me to either set it to a specific level or to offset it by 
a certain value. So that this way if I have geometry on different levels it will basically add this number to each of the levels that already exist. Next I want to tell it to create a specific view for me when I get to the subspindle. I can change the name if I want, this is just the default. I can also tell it that I want this plane for the subspindle to start on the left side of the part or the right side of the part. And I'll tell it to generate the spindle stock on the right spindle. For the length, I can typically hit geometry. If I've selected this in my job setup already, then this value will be entered as I selected it. If not, we can also modify this directly or right click in any of these boxes and grab coordinates from our part directly. For the pick off Z coordinate, I'm simply selecting the point on our part where I'm going to grab it with the subspindle. This could be right at the front edge if that's where your zero position is set, or it could be anywhere along the part relative to where zero is at on the jaws. So in this case, I'm going to grab a position here that's right in the middle. For the cutoff, I can select directly from my tool if I have one set up. This will pull the value in directly. The cutoff X coordinate, again, I can hit from stock. And if I've defined stock, then it's going to set this right at the top of the stock. This is just letting it know where it's going to start. We also have the face stock that it's going to leave and the back face stock. Because my part had additional stock defined here on the back side, this is actually pulling in that same value. So in this case, I may want to modify that to just leave the amount of stock I want on the back face so that I have something to face off when it moves to the sub. The last step that I don't want to skip is going directly to the operations. These are populated based on the method that I chose. In this case, I look at the preposition of the cutoff. The preposition X coordinate is where the cutoff will move before the subspindle comes in to grab it and pull the part out. So I want to make sure that this X coordinate is high enough that the subspindle won't come in and make contact with the cutoff tool itself. This value right here you can see is a radial value. So in this case, X3 will actually give me X6 in my output because the code is in diametric mode. The preposition Z is where the cutoff will take place. It's typically defaulted at zero for a pull operation because it's going to pull the part out by the length of the part and our stock. So the cutoff will be done at zero. Next, we can go down to the clearance position. This is the rapid position for the subspindle before it starts to feed onto the part. So we can adjust this to be any distance that we're comfortable with. The grip position and clamping are all automatically set. There's nothing that we need to do here. Same thing with the cutoff. There's nothing else to select in any of these other operations. If you wish to have customization or elements that you control in the part transfer, these can additionally be set up in the custom parameters. By default, nothing is set up. The code is just output based on the recommendations of Haas but this can be customized along with your post processor. Once we're done, we can green check. This will create our series of operations to do the part transfer with the pull. Next, we'll just show you how you would do your first operation on the sub. Let's say we want to start by facing on the sub spindle. We'll create a new toolpath group just to keep our operations nice and organized. Then we can jump right to the face operation. In this case, I'm going to look for the tool that I've already defined here for the right spindle. You'll notice that right now my axis combination is set to left spindle. When I select a tool that's already been defined for the right spindle, it automatically changes to my right spindle axis combination. But because this is my first operation, I do want to open it up and make sure that my origin is set properly. Right now, the origin is still at the main spindle. So because this plane is being created at the time of making the first operation, I have the ability to come down here and set the Z position to the face on the subspindle. Now I can green check, go to my face parameters. In this case, I can do it facing right at zero. So it takes off that face stock that we left and green check. Now I can see that the operation properly cut on the subspindle 
and that my origin is properly set down at that spindle. If I go to my planes and I select the upper right, I can see that its origin is properly located on the subspindle. Next, we'll take a look at the output for the pick-pull cutoff process. We can see that it starts by calling up the home position as usual and then doing a tool change to call up the cutoff tool. Next, it's going to pre-position the cutoff tool based on that value that we set up in our POCO operation. You can see that we had had X3, which was a radial value, and in the code it's now X6. It's also moving to Z0, which is where the cutoff will take place. Next, it'll turn on the air blast, and then it'll proceed to turn on the main spindle and the subspindle in the same direction, and then apply the spindle synchronization code, which is G199. This locks the spindles and their orientation together so that when we transfer, we have the same orientation on the main spindle as we do on the sub. This allows any main spindle operations to be clocked properly when we move from the main spindle to the sub. You can see as it approaches, it's going to use G54 and the B-axis position. The G54 B-axis position should be set ahead of time at the machine. In this case, you would jog the subspindle down to the zero position of your part on the main spindle and set that as your B0 for G54. This way, when we do a part transfer, we're calling a coordinate that's relative to the work offset on the main spindle. This allows the coordinates to match those that we're cutting with. So here we can see we approach by the half inch and then we proceed to the grip depth that we'd chosen. It will then unclamp, reclamp, and pull the part out to the specified distance based on the length of the part and the face stock that we provided. Then it will follow through with a cutoff operation and then it's going to send the B-axis home. As we can see during this process, the feed rates and the rapid or feed states are directly set by the post processor. These are all items that can be customized or turned into a parameter if you wish to control them per operation, as customization is also included with the purchase of this post processor. The last thing to leave you with is just a reminder on how the B-axis offsets are set up. Currently, the post processor is set up based on the recommendation of Haas. On the main spindle, we're utilizing G54, and the B-axis offset holds the position of the part on the main spindle. This is used during part transfer in order to grip onto the part and then to take it home after the transfer is complete. This also allows you to fine-tune the grip position at the controller instead of having to modify the B-axis position in the code itself. Additionally, for the subspindle, we utilize G55B0. The G55 offset is used on the subspindle and its B0 position holds the machining position of the subspindle when work is being done on the sub. These are of course options that can be adjusted in your post if you do utilize your work offsets differently.